So someone tweeted, the fact that artists say world tour without going to any country in Africa still bothers me, right? And I think this has come up because of Beyonce's Renaissance tour. And to be fair, like, me, I've always thought that bothers me that world tours end up not just not going to Africa, but really most of the world. They really don't go to most of the world. Hey guys welcome to my channel if you're new here i sit on my bed my couch and i discuss whatever i want to discuss firstly i want to thank everybody who has donated to the farm project and if you still want to donate the paypal is in the account somewhere you can donate thank you so much and um if you are south african and you would like to donate you can also donate thank you with that said let's jump into the video I don't really go to these events mainly because I know that these people are trying to make money and um, why would they come to an African country African countries for that matter the, but they've gone these days these artists are coming to South Africa they're coming to Nigeria they can't go to all African countries, but they are. I feel like the industry in itself is changing and we shouldn't be looking at only the negatives. But also, before I even continue with my point of view, and I'm gonna add this amazing lady's point of view, it was so spot on. She's, she broke it down in details for us to have a clear understanding of this. But first, before we even get to that lady, I would just want us to stitch this part, watch it, and then we can finish up with her. Is that cool? Great. Well, someone tweeted, the fact that artists say world tour without going to any country in Africa still bothers me, right? And I think this has come up because of Beyonce's Renaissance tour. And to be fair, like, me, I've always thought that bothers me that world tours end up not just not going to Africa, but really most of the world. They really don't go to most of the world. But I think what bothered me the most was I've been seeing so many responses like this. The tour is for the kids. Why would my auntie bring her tour anywhere near countries with laws killing us? Um, basically alluding to the fact that there are a lot of countries in Africa are homophobic and anti-LGBTQ. And I'm going to share my sentiments and thoughts on this without invoking any anti-blackness because I feel like every time we have conversations, it has to turn into a diaspora war. And I believe we can have nuanced conversations without being really fucking anti-black towards one another. That being said, most of the people with these sentiments I've seen have been Americans. And I'm just going to say this feels like American propaganda that y'all have ingested because this idea that the West is a safe haven for marginalized people is utter fucking bullshit. And using that as a measure for why people go on tours in certain places is bullshit. Because these anti-LGBTQ laws all across the world killing queer people in america as well there are so many places where it is not safe to be a queer person in america and yet she's having a full tour there not only that if that were the case then why is beyonce not going to queer friendly asian countries queer friendly south american countries even fucking australia or even south africa which has really progressive queer laws as compared to most of african countries and not only that, I think it's so deeply inconsiderate to the queer people who actually live in these African countries and have to deal with these laws y'all are talking about. Because we exist, and we love Beyonce, and we love the Renaissance album. Why is it that y'all's solidarity to us, to queer people around the world, especially black and brown queer people, goes out the window as soon as y'all want to talk down about Africa? Well, I understand the political implications of Beyonce coming to do a Renaissance tour in Africa and in these countries, Let's not act like that's the reason this tour is not coming here. Let's not act like that's the reason many artists don't even think of us when they're planning a tour. I think there's such a lack of empathy when people invoke these sentiments and weaponize them against Africans who are trying to just share their sentiments and their feelings surrounding a topic. And I'm really, really in awe of just how quickly black people all across the diaspora are so quick to wield anti-black uh, Western propaganda against each other whenever these conversations come up and I know y'all don't do nuance on the internet so I'm just gonna say to be honest leave us out of this conversation because as queer people 
in Africa, that shit sucks to read. I hate going on the internet reading that shit. Leave us out of this. And that's how I felt about it also the entire time. I felt like everybody just wants us to support them from a distance but they don't want to really come to our nations and come here and show off i mean the only time beyonce has even came to south africa to tour was because of the nelson mandela global whatever concert thing and she came here to perform for the first time right and beyonce have been in the game for so long but the Destiny's Child and all of that has never really came here to tour really and also like they say I feel like also the tickets won't be enough like it's gonna cost way more than what we can afford like it would be over the budget for us black people here but I also feel like there will be people to go but it won't be that much like like the other lady that I'm gonna stitch she's she talks about sponsors and having people who are capable of pulling such a major concert or a major artist to perfection and I don't feel like we have that capacity in South Africa considering the corruption level here so I just I'm really interested in seeing Africa really unfold for the future but it's something that has been is changing I can see it myself and the fact that we young people are coming up and discussing sh such things that gives me hope so much hope so i'm gonna stitch this lady's video she puts out many uh, many points and far better than i can express my own but she speaks what I, I have really on the top of my mind so i'm gonna leave it here Ta-da! See you in my next one. As a person who spent seven years of my career doing music and entertainment marketing and touring with international artists when they come to South Africa, I can tell you that it boils down to actual costs. It boils down to A, can you find a promoter who's willing to take that big of a financial risk? Because at the end of the day, you're either going to take on a big loss or you are only going to break even and not even make a profit. In some instances, you can make a profit, but it also depends on how many sponsors are willing to financially contribute to putting on and the success of the show a lot of people think that ticket prices alone are enough to pay an artist fee <laughs> they absolutely are not the reason that most artists are likely to tour south africa versus other african countries is because south africa already has world-class arenas that they can perform in and there's also a presence of big promoters like live nation which was formerly known as big concerts africa is also a lot out of the way versus other countries and you must also factor in mind that a world tour often doesn't include South America and certain parts of Asia, only the big markets like China, Japan, obviously always London, obviously the Americas. You also have to look at the dollar and euro exchange rate within these African countries. When a ticket price is lowered in order to meet market expectations, it then means that you have less money that you're making on this show and either to break even, make a profit or just make a buy. You'll find in a lot of scenarios in African countries, international artists make it onto festival lineups versus having their own tour only because the risk is less they're able to find a promoter to accommodate them in the right setting where the market will show up what a lot of general public consumers are also not aware of is that depending on how the artist got to the country and in a situation like this i'll use music festivals like ultra south africa and rocking the daisies the promoter actually takes on the cost to not only pay that artist fee for an appearance at their festival but they also pay for all of their ground transfers all of the flights to and from whatever destination they're coming from in the world they also pay to accommodate that person as well as their entire crew and in a lot of instances where you want to match the energy of a show going on i'll use rocking the daisies 2009 the 1975 as an example they want to replicate what the rest of their tour looks like so the promoter then has to pay for the freight of everything needed to reconstruct what their typical stage would look like. Again, they appear in instances of music festivals like Rocking the Daisies, Ultra South Africa, Afro Cella, which is now Afro Fusion, as well as Afro Nation, because they can be able to blend into a set festival style versus have to curate something all the way from scratch. And events like that are able to 
spend a year or two years in advance trying to raise the sponsorship money to add towards the cost of putting on an event where said internationals can tour. It makes more sense for international artists to join a festival lineup than come on their own.